I'm Jack from the Life Fit Studio and in this video I'm going to show you a few exercises you can do if you're having pain in your Achilles, calf muscle and or the outside of the foot while running. So stay tuned and if you like the video give it a thumbs up, like and share it around to your friends. I'm sure they'll find it just as helpful. Okay, let's get into it. You're having pain either in your calf right down to the Achilles, or as I said, on the outside of the foot there, when you're running, walking, jumping, skiing, whatever it is you love doing. The thing we need to understand is why that's happening, what part of our movement pattern is causing that. So, large reason for it, quite often, is our hips might be a little bit stuck into external rotation and don't quite have the range in internal rotation. So that's something we need to look at, improving that internal rotation of the foot. Because as you see, when I externally rotate the foot, a lot of that pressure now comes to the outside of the foot and we can't get the weight under that big toe. From, from the back, how that looks is that lovely line of the Achilles, which should be coming down from the belly of the muscle, converging into that Achilles tendon, nice straight, straight rope here. As I go out like so, that Achilles tendon begins to curve. So as that's tracking 1,000 steps, 5,000 steps, 10,000 steps, or as you add on the kilometers, all that little bit of movement difference makes a big difference to the stress accumulating in the nervous system and in the tissue and so on. So, the areas that we need to look at are hip internal rotation, hip extension, which we're gonna to get to a little bit later, big toe extension, so the ability of the big toe to lift up and as well be able to maintain weight under the big toe, ankle dorsiflexion, so the ability of the ankle to close, yeah? Okay, so let's go through them. And the other one, just one other, is, and that'll come with the hip internal rotation, it'll come with the big toe work, but it's just that little bit of pronation through the foot as well. A lot of people in this pattern stuck in that external rotation will have a overly supinated foot as well through this portion. So we'll get straight into it. Okay, starting with the hip, we want to improve internal rotation. There's a bunch of ways to do it. Imagine we're warming up for a run or for a game, we want to do it more actively, try something like this. Get the hands behind us and kicking out to the outside, yeah? So just getting a nice active internal rotation. Obviously, make the same for an external rotation here as well. To bring that a little different into a seated position or lying down position. Don't think the word seated exists in the dictionary, I believe it's seated. So into a position like so, where the soles of our feet are on the ground, I'm just going to drop my right knee in, creating that internal rotation in the hip. Now if I can, I eventually go hands free on this and maybe actually move over the leg as well towards that stress. But I don't want to overwork my nervous system here or the joints. So what I want to do is I want to quantify the stress happening in my body. I'm going to use a 1 to 10 scale. 1 meaning I feel nothing at all. 10 meaning it's too much, too much, too much. I want to be somewhere between 3 and 7 and 4 and 6. It's known as the zone of proximal development. So, here I am on my left, and about there, feeling right up the back of the hip here, I'm feeling a 5. I'm going to go deeper. I'm feeling a 6 now. Okay, as I move that way, that number is going to increase as the stress is more that way. What do I want to do? I want to relax as much as I can. That six is just a sub subjective experience. It doesn't really exist beyond the parameters of my mind. One of the best tricks for this, big breath in, let it go. And when I say let it go, I mean let it go. You leave the exhale, do what it wants. This isn't a zen control exercise. The paradox here is in order to be in full control, we must let go of control. So it's about calming everything down. There are other tricks like focusing on an object, while working your peripheral vision around the room. That also helps to calm down the nervous system. As well as our inner dialogue. What are we saying to ourselves? Am I saying I'm weak, I'm stiff, I'm sore, and so on? Or am I saying I'm strong, I'm flexible, I'm healthy, I'm reaching that next level? So all of these things really add up and make a big difference. If I'm in bed, say first thing in the morning, or late at night, and I want to get some of this time in while I'm reading, same thing, I can lie back, place my feet out, and just drop in one knee in at a time, if I want to increase that stretch, I can take my left foot here, place it on the outside of my right knee, and just getting more comfortable. Again, right now there's quite a bit of stress going on. I'm not just going to say it's stress, because as we all know, there's 10 out of 10 stress, and there's 1 out of 1, or 1 out of 10 stress. So there's a big spectrum there. So I'm going to say, right now, my lower back, top of my glute, I'm feeling about a 4 out of 10. 
So I'm actually going to put more weight through this leg to increase that now to a five. Okay, what do I do? And let it go. And let it go. One of two things will happen. Either that five out of ten will drop down to a four and a three and so on. Or, depending on the type of stretch, the number might stay the same, but the stretch actually is getting deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper with each exhale, with each kind of trust reimbursement for my nervous system. Okay, so that's our hip internal rotation looked at. The next one we want to get to is our foot. So that big toe I mentioned, we want to get really good at lifting that. So right now I'm lifting it consciously, so I'm lifting it intentionally. We want to develop that neural control over that. Initially, it might feel a little bit like that. Just persevere with it. Keep going, and I guarantee it will come to you eventually. Beyond that, say you're watching TV. You watch an hour of TV, there's 15 minutes of ads. That 15 minutes of ads, 91 and a quarter hours a year for opportunities like this. Sitting on the floor, unsupported, really good for your hip mobility, but also gives you time to get your hands on your feet. Sensitize your feet, open them up, improve that mobility, just getting your toes on them and so on, yeah? So really playing. Again, I mentioned that torsion through this area here, or that supination pronation to help that. You can give it a grab, and like you're wringing a towel, give it that kind of a mobilization. Okay, also good for the big toe and for that ankle joint and its ability to close. Remember, the body's really simple. We get good at what we practice. You want to look like a bodybuilder, you got a bodybuilder. If you want to look like a marathon runner, you got a marathon run. So the presentation or the manifestation of our joints and our muscles and so on are merely an accumulation of our habits. Yeah. So with that in mind, can we look at our daily habits and say, okay, there's this task that reoccurs every day that I could do differently with my body each time. Maybe I can get into these positions. That's loading those joints in that position. Yeah. So say I'm playing with my kids or you're brushing something off the floor or you're reading or whatever, you could totally do it from this position into your potty squats and so on. Variety, variety, variety. Okay, next we're going to get to our calf raises. We want to condition the calf muscle and we want to condition the Achilles tendon to be good and strong, both in the concentric phase and the eccentric phase. That means contracting while, it, while the muscle shortens and lengthens. Most calf tears, Achilles tear, will happen in the deceleration as the muscle goes from short to long. A big thing to watch out for here is a common mistake you'll see when we pop up, we tend to collapse to that outside. So again, we're collapsing to that outside of the foot because the big toe can't handle the pressure. That's gonna change from now on because we're gonna get that big toe used to pressure. So with my mind, I'm gonna drive all of my focus and as much of the pressure through the big toe as I can as I pop up quick and then down slow. I'm gonna come down on a three or a four count. So three, two, one, and relax. Okay, so with that, you have two calf muscles. You have your gastrocnemius and you have your soleus. Your gastro works more when your knees are straight and your soleus works more when your knees are bent. So I'm gonna do my calf raises in both varieties, straight knee and bent knee, yeah? We can also, as we get stronger, we can move that to one leg. And if you want to get a bit of extra depth, using a step, maybe the bottom of your stairs, the edge of a footpath. Again, like that. Just dropping that heel a little further down, popping up, and then down a little deeper. Just gonna get more length into that. And so on. And again, the same with the bent knee. Generally speaking, in order to be kind of, you know, safe to go running with your calves after injury, we should be able to do nice and quick per leg, 30, yeah, per leg, under the big toe in a good pattern, like so. Nice and fast, yeah? So we should be able to build that up to 30 per leg, and then, generally speaking, our calf complex should be strong enough. No, so we have that big toe and its ability to take pressure and to lift. That's going to be really important as the brain allows the foot to start to come in more, straightening out that Achilles tendon, taking the pressure off the outside of the foot. I mentioned earlier hip extension and why that's going to be important and how we're going to work on it. So, one way to work on it is spend more time in hip extension. We spend an awful lot of time in hip flexion. We sit in traffic, 
We sit for dinner, we sit at work. Our hips are in 90 degrees of flexion while we're taking stress, so our hips get used to dealing with stress in that position. Say, for example, you're out running a 10K, you're down to your last half a kilometer, or you're out playing a game and you're down to your last 10 minutes, the stress starts coming in. What happens? The body reverts to the positions it's comfortable with dealing with stress. So, we want to get used to dealing with stress in the opposite positions as well. So if I'm constantly in this kind of a hip flexion, and maybe I want to get the hip extension. A nice way to do it when you're in bed, first thing in the morning, last thing at night, maybe you're reading. What you want to do, get maybe a couple of pillows or something like this under your arse and lie back. Just get your whole body into some extension. Initially, this might be stressful. What do we do? Breathe. <sighs> Let it go. Tell ourselves good things. Tell ourselves, I am calm, I am strong, I am healthy. I am reaching the next level. Don't tell ourselves I am stiff, I am sick, I am sore, I am all of those things, yeah? Because what we say becomes our out, outside reality shortly after. So be very careful with that. The next one for that hip extension. I get into a position like so, so my knee is directly under me from here. I'm not stretching anything, I don't feel a thing. But what I want to do is focus on this little area here, yeah? And imagine I had a dial there. And as I turn that dial, I can posteriorly tilt my pelvis and anteriorly tilt it. For the purpose of this, I want to posteriorly tilt. So as my femur, my leg comes up, my hips coming down, as I posteriorly tilt, I'm opening out to the front. Yeah. Now, the more I squeeze the glute back here at the back, the more I can push that open as well. So from here, I tuck. Straight away, I'm feeling a stretch down along the front of this leg. What is it out of 10? About a 5. What do I do? <sighs> Develop trust within my nervous system, within this position. Get myself used to it, get myself calm with it. I can use my peripheral vision, focus on something in front of me, work on everything around it. Again, tell myself nice happy thoughts. As I'm here and this becomes a one or a two out of 10, then with this engaged, I can move deeper. Yeah, but I don't want to be letting that go and then moving deeper. So I'm only really getting a bit of a thigh stretch and arching my low back and stressing that out and annoying that too. So again, to go through that, I tuck and then I can move. Now, bonus part of this exercise, to help in the extension phase of our running so we can get a more of a four foot land, nice and soft in the ground and actually get more use out of that calf, get more use of that Achilles and its ability to absorb energy and redistribute it, which we can't really do if we're heel striking, is as we're here and we're tucked, say I have a piece of string, tied along here. As I tug that string, I'm going to squeeze or clinch this bump sheet, squeeze this glute. Yeah? So that's training my nervous system that when we push forward, when we extend through the hip, the glute is the dominant, preemptive, first one to go, not the hamstring. The hamstring is often the one to go because again, we spend so much time sitting in cushioned seats or arse falls asleep. So it's a way to switch on the right light switches at the right sequence when walking into that big brain of ours, okay? Going from that, what I'd often do if I'm going out running, make sure we get a ha handle on this first, but we can do that same exercise in a lunge, again, dropping that knee forward to a similar position, tucking as best we can, it's a little bit more difficult, and because maybe I'm going for a run, I've already done one or two kilometers of a run, I've stopped for a few seconds, I'm just pulsing one, two, three, stepping forward a few, onto the other, dropping that back knee, tucking the tail, one, two, three, and so forth. And nearly every time without fail, when I go to take off for the rest of the run, I feel more upright, my chest is more open, my shoulders are more back and down, I'm more open through the pelvis, and I'm able to land more with those feet under me to get, again, more use out of that calf complex. Yeah? So, work through it again. What do we want to do? We want to lift the big toe, get it really good at that both passively, using our hands, using any means necessary, yeah? and actively, so with our mind, be able to focus on that and control it. Now the alternate movement of being able to lift and move the other toes is also important, but for the purpose of this, let's focus on the big toe. That ankle joint, we want to get it good at closing. We do that by spending time with it in those positions. Yeah, The calf, we want to condition it. We want to condition it under that big toe, not out here, because you see what happens at Achilles when we're here, but under that big toe, up and down, slow, up, fast, down, slow. Really, really important. And then the hip, two main ones, 
We want to work in that internal rotation, yeah? So in an internal rotation, but as well that extension because it'll never do any harm, okay? Uh, I'm going to show you one bonus one. Try this one. You will probably not thank me for it. It's quite tough. It's called the 90-90. Um, and the position you get into, so this does external and internal rotation of the hip. So right now my right hip is doing external rotation. My left is doing internal rotation. The position is, if I just put my hand straight out, I want my right thigh to follow that. And then 90 degrees in that joint goes my shin bone. Now, on the alternate, my left thigh bone should be parallel with my right shin, and my left shin should be parallel with my right thigh. So that takes the line straight across my chest. Quite often you need to look down just to make sure that that leg's not up here, getting it back there, and make sure that the knee joints aren't in here or out there, so we lose leverage. As best you can, do it hands-free. If you need, lean back by all means, but gradually, 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 we get here. Another compensation to look for are our sinking backs. We want to make sure we engage through here and lift that up. And here we are. Okay. Now, over time, so right now the pelvis is a little bit like that because I don't like as much internal rotation here. But as that improves, this settles. So, if I was to make it look worse for a second and I was here, my spine now has to really overwork. So my spine now is having to do jobs that it shouldn't even have to do. It should be nice and relaxed and doing its own thing. But meanwhile, it's accumulating stress because other parts of the body aren't doing their job. So as the hips improve their mobility, the pelvis stabilizes and the spine can relax. So now it's in a position to go do all the things it's amazing at, okay? Next part of this is the turn. So imagine you have a handle here and a handle here. And also imagine that your feet are glued. So it's really important that your feet don't slide. If they slide during this turn, you're gonna lose that connection and torque through the hip. So again, imagine a handle there and a handle there. You lift those handles up and down to the other side. Again, make sure that you bring that pelvis up and through. Have a quick look to make sure everything is still in order. My left knee here needs to open a small bit. And again, I'm gonna pick those handles back up and back around. So that's the 90-90. Okay, I'm gonna leave you with that, remember. Big toe's ability to lift and take pressure under the ball of the big toe. Very, very important. A hint, have a look at the calluses near your feet. Where's the skin toughest? It should be good and tough. Nicely even across, but definitely under that big toe. A lot of us are getting tough to that outside. Also, look at your shoes. See where the shoes are wearing. Are they wearing to the inside of the heel or the outside of the heel? Have a look at all of these things. Getting the hands on the feet, closing that ankle joint by spending time in squats, spending time down on the ground. Conditioning that calf, again, up fast, down slow, driving the weight under the big toe and working on that hip, internal rotation. Just gonna quickly go over this. Right now, I'm at about five out of 10 stress here. What do I do? Okay, now, if I'm worse at this or this is too much stress, I go here to ease it off. If I'm getting good and this is too boring and this is too boring then I go there so there's always a to comfort and to stress so I want to go deeper to stress again I tell myself nice happy thoughts I breathe I calm myself down while I'm there I reassure my nervous system it's safe okay so that's it I hope you enjoyed the video if you did please like share subscribe do whatever you can to get the word out give us a hand here at the Lightfoot studio it's been a pleasure uh, I've been Jack and thanks again